So hi and welcome to another video and today we're going to be doing a comparison about all these different artisan pads here. There's seven here, I've got the range of the artisan pads to give you an idea of the differences when you're looking to buy them. Now if you've been following my review videos and my mouse pad friction videos, I normally do a test. Today we're going to do that in another video to show you how fast these pads are because there's quite a lot to get through here in the comparison and telling you what the differences are. And it'll take up quite a bit of time so I'm going to do it in two videos. So I bought all these from the Japan shop and got them shipped over to the UK to pay a bit of import duty, which is quite expensive. And the only one I couldn't get as an FX is the Raiden. I've got that as a classic. I reckon there's some improvements, but we'll see. Maybe we'll use the Raiden as that kind of example to give you an idea of the classic pad, which the Raiden is, versus the FX pad, which the other ones are. So also when doing the friction test in the next video, I've also got a Zero Classic and a Zero FX, which I've got here. And I've got a Soft Foam extra soft foam and a medium foam so we can understand if that makes a difference when we're doing the friction test and that should apply to all the other pads as well so if you've got a classic one or you can only get a classic you'll be able to see kind of what you expect to get performance wise using that zero as a comparison so we've had to give as much detail as i can on these pads obviously the mouse pads so there's not too much to go over but i'm going to give you an idea of what the differences are different textures and by the end of this you should kind of have an idea of which pad you want so we're going to start with the Hayati FX. Now, apologies if I destroy all these names because I'm not Japanese, if you've noticed, and uh, I don't know Japanese. <laughs> so, yeah, I'll put a list in the description so you can understand which ones I'm talking about in which order. So, I'm going to do these mouse pad reviews. I'm going to read a quick spec of what they say it is, and I'm going to give you my thoughts of what I think it is. And if there's any similarities, which there will be on these pads, we'll just assume that's the same, and I'll mention that, for instance, the backing on these. And we'll understand that that's the same throughout every pad version here. If it's different, I will mention it. So the high, so the high, so the high eight, so the high, high eight, so the high eight FX here is a polyester cloth. It feels like satin, they say. It's got a stitch edge, which it has. It's got a medium, large, and FX size that you can buy. It comes in at three millimeters thick. It's extra soft, soft, and medium foams available as well. And it comes in black. That's what they're telling us here. Okay. They also say it's got an initial fast motion and it's a balanced pad here for control and speed. Now, my thoughts on this when I first picked it up was number one, it's not black. Mine's like more like a navy blue. And you can see that throughout the color range. This one's black, this one's black, this one's black, blue, blue, coffee brown, although it's near enough black and a white. But this Hyatt FX is definitely blue not black now if you've been following my other reviews you know i'm not a fan of stitched edges i do prefer a non-stitch edge like the classic but i've got to say here on the range here from artisan i actually like the stitched edge because the way it fits on the pad it doesn't have a lifted up edge like you see on something like the mp510 which annoys me it's, it's almost built into the pad at the same level as the top of the pad and that makes it a great stitched edge in my opinion now it's not all of here. The one thing that I do not like about these artisan pads is the base. The base on this desk, they are all over the place. It's almost like there is no resistance. They just slide about with this rubber surface. And it's a real problem for me. That is certainly a concern that the pad doesn't stick to the, the desk. My desk is nothing special here. It's not very smooth. Um, a lot of the other pads I've used, I've stuck to it no problem. But these artisan pads, they move around quite a bit. So you might need to secure it. And that's certainly something to think about when you're buying these. So what I've done here is I've taken the Zero FX with a medium foam. I've taken the Raiden with a medium foam. I've taken out the classic Zero with extra soft foam. And I've also got the QCK Plus here from Steel Series. What I'm showing you here is the force required to push the mat across the desk. As you can see, the FX slides around. A few people have said to use water on the base of this and stick it to the table. I'm not sure if that works. You can certainly see that the soft foam here on the Artisan Classic Zero makes the pad stick to the surface. And you can also see the QCK has no issues whatsoever. The higher the force, the more it takes to push the mat. So the low force here in grams, like 180, is not very much force. And you can see the mat sliding across the table. To me, does it feel like a satin material? No, it feels almost more like a wetsuit material. High eight, I wouldn't say it was satin, but it is a smooth cloth. It's certainly got a texture built into it, but it doesn't come through, particularly on the pad when you're rubbing your hand across it. It's quite a smooth pad. 
So what I've done at the end of this video as well is I've given my thoughts on the speed ratings of these pads from slow to fast as a guess. And I'm going to check that later on when I do all the friction tests in my next video. But feel free to put the seven pads here in a list of slowest furs in the comments and give me your opinion as well. It'd be interesting to see how that turns out when we do the real test. So moving on now, we're going to go to the Hi8. We're going to move on to the Hi8, the hi -at Otsu which is this pad here. So let's go through what they say about this pad. They say it's a weave. It's a smaller weave, they say, than the standard hi -8. Hard to tell because they're both pretty small, to be honest. It's a smooth texture. It's got a, a stitch edge again, which it does. They all have stitch edge apart from the classic. We'll go into that later. It's medium, large, and extra large sizing. It's three millimeters thick, and they're all three millimeters thick here, including the stitched edge. It all comes in at three millimeters. You can't buy any other thickness pad. They say it comes in black as well. The weave density is small. They also say that the weave has some raised edges. Now, for me, the Otsu here does have a little bit more texture to it than the Hi8 standard. I'll call it the standard. It certainly does. Again, it's blue. It's a very, very dark navy blue. It's not black. Maybe mine got faded in the post, eh? Hey? So everything else is the same. The one, the few different comparisons here that I found on this pad is is really that it's almost identical to Hi8, it just has a slightly more textured surface. That's it, it's pretty much the same pad. One other thing to note, and a few people have mentioned it in comments on Reddit and around the internet, is that these used to come rolled up. As you can see in this video, they are all flat packed, including the classic and now the FX. I don't know if they went through a period of rolling them up, but now they're all flat, which is great to see out of the box. So let's move on to the Hi8 KU, K O U FX. This is this one here. And again, it's another polyester cloth. They all seem to be polyester cloth. Again, they say it feels like satin. It's got a stitched edge. It comes in small, medium, large, and extra large. So the difference here, this one comes in small. Again, it's three millimeters thick, and it comes in black again. So they say this is a fusion of the standard Hi8 and the Otsu Hi8, okay? And they're giving the priority to stopping here. So you get more control when you're stopping. Now that's gonna be hard to show. We'll see in some of the tests, but Give it a bit of a go and see what I think. I'm going to test all these with the mice and give a few games on them and, and try and understand there's other differences here. And we'll do that in the other video. So if I compare it, it's got the same traits, it's got the same back end. It's more black. This one is black, which is a good start. It came with a defect. I don't know if you've spotted it on the logo on this one. This one's got almost like a blurred logo where it's kind of split. So quality is a little bit of an issue on this one. Don't know if that's across the pack because the rest are okay. This one's got kind of a weird double print on it. The texture though is the smoothest one out of the high eight ones. It certainly is a nice feeling pad. This one I expect it to be slightly quick. Other than that, it's pretty much the same. It's certainly a better stitch. It's a more almost like a traditional weave on this one, I would say. Moving on to the high end FX. They say this one's got a pear skin effect. Okay, it does kind of look like that to be fair. There's a little bit more textured. It's got a stitched edge. It comes in small, medium, large, and extra large again. So you can get it in small as well. This one comes with a soft, extra soft and medium sponge available. And it comes in black and red. So this one is black, but it's more like a charcoal black. The one feature that stands out on this hind one is the texture. It would say that it's, the, it's one of the most textured pads here from Artisan compared to the others. It's certainly going to be, in my opinion, one of the slower ones with the grips. Well, you'd think it is. It might make the mouse sit a bit higher and it might glide better, but we'll find out in the tests. I've certainly got this one down as one of the slowest, if not the slowest. One of the other unique features that have come up here, and I don't know how true this is with the high end, is that it's, it's, it's humidity and sweat resistant. So if you're living in a bit more of a humid country, this one might be better for you. It won't absorb the water from your hand or sweat. That's what they're telling us anyway. I haven't tried that myself. So moving up here, we've got the Zero FX. Now they say in their comments that this is the closest to the QCK Steel Series texture-wise, and it is, it's probably a little bit rougher, but it is certainly very similar to that texture. This is a knitted polyester, a smooth texture, it's got a stitched edge again as we stitch edge again as we know. It comes in medium, large, and extra large, it doesn't come in small. You can get extra soft, soft and medium sponge as well, which is good, and it comes in black. And again, this one is this one's jet black. This is a real jet black like the QCK. My only thoughts on this one are that it does have the characteristics of a QCK. I do prefer the edge into this than the QCK, which is unusual because it's the stitching edge. But again, the base would be an issue for me with how much it slides around. QCK is more secure. So you can see so far, they're very, very similar, these pads. 
and the testing of the friction is probably what's going to really tear them apart. But at the moment, I thought I'd give you this kind of impressions and what they feel like, how they are, and then we'll do the testing in the other video, like I said. So we're moving on to the Raiden. This is the classic version, and they said early on in their speech on their website, when you look at the FX, that there's a 200% ease of use increased. So 200% efficiency, of, I guess, of how I'm going to use this pad. So that got me a little bit thinking of really what's changed on it. So, you know, is it worth upgrading your classic to a new FX? So this is a classic Raiden. It comes in a knitted polyester. It's smooth. It doesn't have a stitched edge. It comes in medium, large, extra large. It's three millimeters thick as well. Same thickness as the FX series. You can have it in extra soft, soft and medium sponge again. And it comes in coffee brown. Now, is it coffee brown? Yeah, but it's not as brown as you'd expect. I thought, well, you have some, some pretty good setup here to have a brown mouse pad. It's not brown. It's almost like a faded gray, but it's certainly not black. But they don't say that this time. What are the main differences? Well, number one, it doesn't have a stitched edge. It has exactly the same base. So that was a disappointment. I'm thinking, great, this classic. Maybe, you know, maybe it was a bit stickier. It's not. It's got exactly the same surface. It slides around just as much. It probably frayed a little bit more. The logo design's different. And you know what? <laughs> That's it. I cannot understand where the 200% difference is. If you want to send me a Raiden FX, feel free, because I couldn't get older one. And maybe there's some changes that I can compare the differences to here. But for me, I can't see it. But we'll see that maybe when we look at the Zero Classic versus the Zero, zero FX going forward in the next test. What's the texture like? It's almost a bit more liney, this texture. It's very smooth. It feels almost like a wetsuit again, material. It feels quite smooth. The one thing that was slightly different as well, so not only is the edge not stitched, but I felt the foam was maybe a little bit softer on this. This is a medium foam, as are all the rest here. And it did feel fractionally softer. And I originally thought it was thicker, but I measured it with the other artisan pads here, and it's the same thickness. So it looks thicker, but it isn't. Yeah, and that's it really. Can't really tell you much more. So now we move on to the masterpiece of the show that everyone really has probably been looking at, the fastest one, I would say. And this is the Shen Dikai. And this has a, well, it's the FX version. I'm going to get in a small. They say it's got a glass coated cloth, but it can be rolled for traveling, which is interesting. It's extremely smooth and fast. It's got a stitched edge. It comes in small, medium, extra large and large. Again, you can have extra soft foam, soft or medium. It comes in black, white, which this one is. And it also comes in strawberry. Quite like the white. It'd be interesting to see how dirty it gets though. But maybe the protection of the coating might stop that. They say it's, fused, it's a cloth fusioned with glass and that it's one of the fastest ones, if not the fastest one. I mean, it does bend, so it falls up just like a normal mat. You can see it's probably a little bit stiffer than you'd expect. Um, and it folds out okay. You know, it does fold so you can travel around with it. What does it feel like? It feels, the way I describe it is it's, it's almost like a hard pad. That's what it feels like, but it's bendable. Whereas like most hard pads aren't bendable. It's got a little bit of give in it. It's probably not as hard as a standard hard pad. There's a little bit given the, the surface. Probably as much as the other artisan pads here. Certainly quick. It's got a nice stitched edge again. The edge on this one is, is a little bit more raised. So because of the coating, you can feel the edging on the sides here a little bit. It's like millimeters compared to others. But it's not as smooth as the other ones on the stitching. But I don't think that's going to cause you a problem. So how I rate these, as I said, I'm going to rate them in speeds for today to give you an idea. But we won't really know that until we do a proper test, which we'll do in the next video. Or well, to keep this video fairly short. I'm going to go from the slowest to the fastest. Put in the comments which ones you think. And I reckon the Heinz are slowest. And then the standard Hyatt. Then the Zero. Then the Hyatt Ku. Then I'm going to go with the Raiden. Then I'm going with the Hyatt Otso. And then I'm going to go with the Sendikai as the fastest pad. That is my thoughts. Feeling the textures. Trying to get an idea of what performance they're going to do. So I hope this has given you what you wanted. It's quite hard to, to give you a comparison here because they are so, so similar. I can see why a lot of people have requested this video. I was certainly struggling to try and find anything that I could tell you a lot about in the differences. I've given you some good shots, hopefully for the textures. Put some more on my Instagram page if you want to take a look. And yeah, hopefully this has given you a good idea of what you want to see. The next one's going to have all the speed tests, which is what we're interested in. And we'll use the FK2 to do that to give us a standard. Comparison, I'm certainly looking forward to it and I'm expecting some pretty fast speeds out of this bad boy, but we'll see. Maybe that'll be the fastest pad we've tested. So I hope you've liked this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you all again soon. Catch you later. Bye bye.